David Zerti for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. You know, I thought it was due to just, you know, have a video where we're just chatting. There's no big discussions going on, but um, I wanted to invite my brethren, um, my brother from another mother, but this gentleman has a beautiful London accent as opposed to my horrific New York City accent. And that's, we need, we need the kind of the balance between the two, both London and New York City. Peter Brooker from Taylor's with Love. How are you, Peter? I'm very well. Thanks, David. Great to be back on your channel. Um, thank you for coming back. Uh, many people don't come back, but you were brave enough to. Peter, I got to ask you right off the bat, I, I, I got to ask you if you're feeling okay, because you're not wearing your branded jacket. You're wearing something different today. What's going I on? Know. Well, I've, I've just had to exchange the jacket that has pretty much been tattooed on my body for the last, feels like, two decades. The Avtac jacket, the pipe blues on from um, A View to a Kill, is now taking up a temporary residence in the summer wardrobe side of, of my wardrobe closet. So now I've uh, transformed David. I've made a seamless transition into a new collection that right. um, I've, I think you'll be seeing quite a bit of. It looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's, from, that's from the NPL 007 collection, isn't it? It is, yeah. And what was really good about that collection, and I think your coverage, by the way, and everyone that was at the NPO event in NYC was fantastic. Everyone had a different spin on it. Everyone was looking really good in the outfits. But what I noticed when I went to the BFI screening of Honor Majesty's Secret Service uh, last week, where George Lazenby did a q and A, I I was looking intensely, knowing that some of these outfits could potentially be in the collection. And it's weird. NPL have kind of pointed my mind to where my closet wants to go. So noticing the the golfing outfit, the orange turtleneck, sorry, orange mock turtleneck, right. and the uh, the brown zip through bomber. I was I just said as soon as I came on the screen to Anastasia, I said, I need that. I need that. Even if they don't create it, even if they don't put it in the collection, I'm going out tomorrow and finding something like that because there's so many outfits in that film alone that just really speak, and not just on George. Um, I recently spoke to Mark O'Connell and he said that ball rink scene, if you look at that closely, the ball rink scene, everyone is made up of Esquire models. There's so much uh, like easy on the eye candy that's going on just in that scene alone. Um, people are picture perfect in that film. So they've they've picked out some of the real uh, show ponies from all of the Bond films. And yeah, I'm I'm in, I'm infatuated with this collection. Yeah, I agree. It looks great on you. Now, I, I have to say, because, you know, one of the things I don't want this video to be about, because there's other videos, we're doing reviews, etc. I actually wanted to invite you on here because I wanted to talk about the fact that there's a lot of discussion in the Bond community about content that's being created. Um, there are people that talk about the books, and that's fantastic content. There are people that talk about the films, and that's fantastic content. There are people that talk about the posters and the teaser trailers and all these things and, and reviews and movies that are kind of like Bond. And you've got all this wonderful content. You and I and a handful of others tend to gravitate to the sartorial or the brand aspects of Bond. I tend to focus on marketing and branding aspects. So my content, for those that uh, follow my content, they know and expect, all right, there's going to be brand discussions. You know, if you're tuning on to hear, you know, how Ian Fleming wrote his prose, David Zaritsky is not going to be the expert. And I think it's the same with you. For example, um, discussion point. Let's talk about the No Time to Die poster. All yeah. right. So some people look at the poster and they go, well, let me compare this to the 1970s, 1980s posters. We'll do that. But some of the first things we'll look for is the sartorial aspect of the poster. So what did, what did you think of, first of all, overall, what did you think of the No Time to Die poster? Well, I first saw it when you messaged the group that we're involved in and that I, I immediately wrote back, wow. Uh, it was just so great to see a new picture come out that looked like it was a legit picture and not something that was taken miles away. So my instant reaction was that's beautiful because I'm seeing something original. Um, then I realized it was a teaser poster and I just thought, well, well, there you go. It's it's a teaser post, so let's not get too wound up. Or you know, there's there's more battles out there to win, etc. I right. think um, I think the general consensus where people were slightly under teased. <laughs> I think that was what they felt. And I was uh, I then started, like you saying, sartorially, I was really trying to identify what was underneath the the title and it looked like a tux, a normal straightforward Tom Ford tux. But I thought this isn't some tux that I've seen before and I went straight then onto Instagram. So I have like a few 
um, joining dots that I normally do when I have this thing. Went to once Daniel Waring, and he nailed it straight away with, uh, I think it was the Tom Ford Shelton tuxedo, which that's right looked blisteringly great. Um, I then pinged it to my girlfriend, and she immediately, <laughs> without missing a beat, wrote back and said, I'm not making a jigsaw out of that because <laughs> she's massively into jigsaws at the minute. And uh, all, like we've, I've actually got a Bond jigsaw lying around just here. And uh, so, yeah, we're infatuated with jigsaws. And she says, yeah, we'll, we'll give that one a miss when it comes out on the jigsaw. But that's that's interesting you say that because a lot of people have been saying, you know, for this poster, they're like, all right, we got a new image, but it's not something I'm going to hang on my wall. Like Joe Darlington being James Bond said, yeah, OK, but I'm not going to hang it on my wall. You know, your your you know, significant other says we're not going to make a jigsaw, meaning you don't want to own that image. I was the same way. I have to tell you, when I first saw it um, and I sent it to the group, there were people in the group that said, all right, that's not official, is it? Like, you know, somebody's that's a fanfic type thing and maybe not even a good one at that. Um, I did not like the poster. And, you know, listen, I know everybody says, well, you guys, you know, you're associated with the brand. You've got to say everything nice. No, we don't. I mean, mm. actually, we, we need to say what's on our mind. I had a lot of problems with the poster. First of all, I wasn't crazy with the face he's making in the poster. It almost looks like he's looking at the paparazzi or, or something disturbing offline. Uh, which, you know, Bond can make that look, but it's not a steely, cold, I'm an assassin, I'm James Bond, I'm badass look like the Spectre poster was when he's all in black and everything like that. And the other thing was his stance was very strange. Like it was like knee to knee, it was kind of turned, but again, it wasn't as badass like squared away, I'm ready to fight. And then to your point, they put the title right over that amazing tuxedo. <laughs> so like, dude, you have all this blue space of the Cuban wall shot in Pinewood. And, and, you know, kudos to Greg Williams who shot that. That's not a superimposed picture. Greg Williams shot him in a tuxedo in front of that wall. Fantastic. But why did you choose to put the title? We know the title. You're not announcing yeah. the title. So don't yeah. just put it so big and bold. Have the eye line go right to there. Why do you want the eye line to go to the open space of the blue? And I just scratched my head and then the, the designer in me thought, all right, there's got to be a meaning behind this. They sat for days and weeks agonizing. They must have had a wall of a thousand pictures. And they, at the end of the day, they said, that's the one. And I just couldn't understand why. Did you do the and same thing? That's that's a really good point, actually. I didn't think you do have that massive space of blue wall that's gaping. If you need to put anything anywhere, that's where it can go. I'm with you on the stance. It doesn't look like he really wanted to have that shot. As in, it doesn't look like he's pulling a look to kind of warrant a teaser poster trailer. And then I listened to Joe's podcast earlier and he brought up a good point about how can you be diplomatic versus positive, you know, because I think we're all in the same circle of trust here where we try and spin a positive uh, look on things. And at the same time, well, we do have to say when it's, you know, a bit subpar or if it's disappointed us, then we have to highlight that as well. I did feel slightly underwhelmed, but then I don't really build myself up for teaser posters. It wasn't like I was waiting for this teaser post to affect my life. So I saw it and moved on. Um, I did have a conversation with um, the gentleman who runs the Fundables website, uh, the Picture Archive, unofficial, and he came up with a good point. He goes, why didn't we just let this become something that the fans can control? Maybe the fan art that's been kicking around is a lot better than this poster. Maybe the fans, if we had, say, 10 production stills from Pinewood and Eon then put that on their website and goes, right, fans, or everyone come to the website, pick the 10 pictures that you want to do, make them your own, put them into infograms, uh, put them into paint, do something, chop and change it. Do your own drawings and then plaster the title and the best one will be the poster. I think giving something to the fans and making it a bit more interactive. I think it's because it looked like this was done by fans in a way. It looked like some kind of fan art rather than something that was official. Yeah. So I think that would have been a quite interesting way to go. What do you think? That's an amazing idea. I love that. And you could you could actually create that very authentic groundswell movement if eon said you know something we're going to take it 75 percent of the way there we're going to give you a kick-ass image or you know what maybe 10 images and you guys fill up the blank spaces and we're going to choose the top three and we're going to like herald these fans i mean that would be an amazing thing to do and i'm telling you it would be viral in the bond community point in fact when we first saw that image um the first one of the first official images of craig walking in london and the the um, Aston Martin's behind him and the flag is blowing in the back and he's in that kick-ass Tom Ford suit. I thought to myself, 
please tell me that's going to be the initial poster. Yeah. And then sure enough, you had all these people making it into the poster. It looked amazing. And I think that's why when I saw the teaser, I'm like, I just went from, because I hung that poster in my display. I have that same it, yeah. poster. It's so good. I suddenly went like, no, that's not as good as what yeah. the fans put together. Yeah. And especially now that people go through the archives and say, here's all the, the teaser posters that have been and gone before. I mean, that one in Casino Royale where he's just sitting almost in pitch black and it's only the, the light that's spearing across his eyes as he's kind of peering across the casino table. That's creative. That's a, that teases you. Yeah, that teases the heck out of me. That arouses me. <laughs> you know, but something like this, I just think was, um, yeah, yeah, it could have could have been fought through a little bit more. I think uh, there's there's interesting discussions going around that um, people, the reaction that people are having in general to some of the delays, to the teaser poster, to no teaser trailer. Um, some people were very disappointed in Global James Bond Day. You know that there were a couple announcements from partners, but there wasn't anything earth shattering that actually what the fans put together, whether it was the posts of the day, the celebrations of the day, the events of the day really outshined anything else. Um, and, and even those weren't everybody's cup of tea. I mean, look, I'm the first to admit that, you know, watching an NPL event of clothing that you may or may never buy may seem like a very long commercial. Uh, to a lot of people, it was a big deal who connect to the Bond lifestyle. And if it wasn't, you just don't watch it and you go do your own thing. You can watch a movie or read a book, et cetera. People have choices. But I think because there's been so much frustration, there's a couple of reactions. Um, people start to get negative. Uh, they start lashing out. They start to lash out to each other, whoever has an ear. Uh, they start lashing out to Eon. And they start to riddle you know, this as problematic in expectations. And I know many of us try to keep above that. Um, even with the teaser poster, I kind of I got over it really quickly. I mean, I wanted to share my opinion with you, but yeah. you got to move on and celebrate other things. I think so. Um, and there'll be bigger things. Were you disappointed that there wasn't a teaser trailer? Were you amped up for today to, for Jable Glenn? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if you've heard any of my um, videos, but I thought in one of my live streams, I thought could be Tuesday, could be Thursday. I don't think it's going to be Saturday because Saturday is a bad day to release things just from a media standpoint. Um, and also, I thought it was a bit too on the nose to release it on Global James Bond Day. Uh, and we didn't get any of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, who knows? You know, by the time this goes up, um, probably, yeah. this is going to go up pretty quickly, but uh, we may have a teaser trailer and we'll, we'll eat our words. Yeah, I know a lot of the guys that I was with were checking their phones, Twitter feeds, Instagram, looking when I was when I was at the event with NPL, and they were very disappointed. I can tell you one gentleman in particular, and he won't mind me saying this, uh, Calvin Dyson was devastated. <laughs> Bless him, poor video. Calvin. Poor Calvin was gutted. He was, uh, I, I think it was going to be something that was really going to make his weekend on, on top of everything else. Cause I know um, a lot of the others went to the sky for screening, which apparently da Daniel Craig was there for the last one. Really? So, uh, yeah. Um, so I going by hearsay, Mark O'Connell was there, I think the day before and he sat, but this is cracking name dropping and he, he sat in out. front of Judy. Dan, Dan That's Judy. right. Yeah. So yeah, you heard that one, which was quite sweet. And as we were going through, um, again, checking for his trailer landing is the trailer landing, seeing yeah. what's going on. Apparently Daniel Craig was there at the last screening. Wow. Uh, someone might come along and just say that was complete myth. I apologize, but that's what I've heard in here. So because that's I was thinking, well, maybe it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know this isn't the place for rumor mills. We'll do that off air. Damn it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Damn it. Well, one of the things too is, um, you know, there was a, I think, so many di disappointments around the trailer because even we were ready at NPL in New York City. We had a big screen, and I said, "Look, I know the commercials playing here, but just in case the trailer pops, like at noon, we've got to be ready to watch it together. That would be like a religious experience to watch it amongst all your Bond friends and all these people from the Bond community." And we're just sitting there, like, "When's it going to happen?" And it didn't happen. Well. It will happen. It will probably happen as we're on the phone talking to each other now. And I think I won't be watching it, though, David. So I was um, oh. I was very, I tell you what, I was quite, what's the word? Sneaky. Uh -huh. it, I was I was I was not fast. You know, these guys were getting amped up. They were looking forward to it. And I was thinking, <laughs> you know, I, I, I really just don't want to watch or see any spoilers 
leading up to the film and it's going to be so hard because it feels like it's all mapped out already on our social feeds. I feel like I, I already have seen the trailer in many ways. Many ways. Um, but, you know, I'm still investing in some delayed gratification. I don't know where it's going to lead. And well, yeah, so I wasn't that that irked, I should say. That's a good thing, actually. A really good thing. Absolutely. So what what are you um, what are you looking forward to next then? I mean, what are the things that, you know, you're kind of waiting to embrace? So I'm. Personally, I'm really I can't wait for something that's called Moore Fest, um, the Roger Moore Festival that's held at the Cinema Museum in London. That's happening this weekend coming, actually. Oh, wow. Um, so they'll be playing Fire Ice and Dynamite and Sea Wolves, a couple of films, and there'll be a whole bunch of Bond alumni that will be going to that. So I'm looking forward to meeting some of the, the fellow Bond podcasters that I've not seen so far. That'll be quite fun. Who's, who's going that I might know? Uh, Intrepid Bonds going. Um, I believe a uh, team from the James Bond Radio are going. I, I believe, and um, someone from the Double O Files, I think, is coming along to that possibly. So, I gotta imagine Mark O'Connell's going to be going to that one. No. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Mark and I are like meeting in every street corner at the minute. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so great. Well, I, I saw a picture of you and AJ Chowdhury uh, dancing together, which I'm glad you brought your relationship to a new level. That was nice. That was entirely my idea, oh. <laughs> even though even though I'm pretending to look awkward in the picture, uh, it was me that encouraged matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th it was a lot of fun seeing those guys, and um, yeah, I can't wait for that. There's Bond stars happening at Pinewood, so there's going to be another screening of License to Kill, um, and again, a lot of I think a lot of the Bond alumni are going to that, including. Yeah. Uh, you, you, sorry, Dave. You've been to Pinewood a whole bunch of times, I imagine, for the Bond. I would say a whole bunch, like three or four, but you yeah. know, several. But it's yeah. it's an amazing, uh, very. I don't know. There's something about it when you when you step foot there, and I'm sure it's all psychological, of course. That just transports you, and it's it's almost like you're walking into a church of right. like amazing things that have happened there. And what's the theatre like? Because they have the John Barry theatre in there. Don't it's not they? monstrous, but it's uh, well appointed. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, you, you know you're not going to look up the ceiling and there's, you know, dust falling down. Uh, they keep everything in really great shape, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's a monstrous place. Right. Well, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. There will be obviously more releases from the NPL collection. I'll be doing some more videos around some of the items and the garments yeah. and, and putting together like a I don't know if I'll do a list to call uh, the wish list. I just know that the the pieces that I've been lucky to receive so far have just worked out fantastic. I think they look great. Uh, I'm I'm gagging to get my hands on the Live and Let Die roll neck, which um, which will be on the on the savings list <laughs> on the Christmas list for that. Um, so yeah, so a lot of stuff in the tank. It's amazing how much is coming up. It's interesting. I mean, I want to I want to actually do a video around this. Um, but I'll just mention this almost as a teaser for you to think about, but also for everybody else to hear. I do want to get you and Matt and Remert and, you know, maybe even like Harris, you know, dressing like Bond um, on a Skype call to really talk about um, what we've seen so far in No Time to Die. And what do we think? You know, do we think this is going to be a satorial nightmare? You know, are there as many outfits from this as we saw in Quantum of Solace or Skyfall that we want, that we were hankering for? Because there's a big discussion right now with people saying, well, I like that suit. But other than that, what's going on here? I don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that we've seen already has caused a bit of controversy online. I had this with Bobby Morelli, who talked about the corduroy suit. He goes, well, that looks a fantastic. Uh, I believe Massimo, Massimo Alba, I always mispronounce it. The suit looks really good, but isn't he going to be sweating away in that? You know, isn't that a great suit, but wrong climate? So, yeah, there's so many things that look, potentially could be some missteps coming. Um, I've spoken to some brands uh, that are, it's kind of off the record and they think it's not quite lining up um, the way they want it to. Um, but, you know, how often do they actually get it wrong? Not often, do they? No. And we so. also don't know the context. I mean, I always think that, you know, we take a look at an image and we go, well, I wouldn't wear that. Therefore, it's shite. As opposed to saying, well, hold on a second, you know, is he in disguise? What's he doing? I remember when um, uh, from Spectre, they saw Daniel Craig in the Tom Ford um a Rome scene when he was at the funeral and they're like double breasted with a vest. And that's not what Bond is. Meanwhile, he was in disguise as yeah. kind of fatty. Um, so we didn't know the context. 
That's really good. Yeah, and that's a great point. We just don't know so much about hardly anything, and we can't wait to eat our own words, I think, on you know, and a lot of the stuff that we've churned out so far. But this is what we've got to talk amongst ourselves, haven't we? It's what drives us until we actually see the film. It's what's been keeping us going for five years, really. You up for a roundtable if I put a roundtable together around that? Absolutely. I'd love to, yeah. All right, maybe we'll even do a live stream and just put everybody on the spot, which will be perfect. I'm all in, all in. Matt is so good when you do live with him because his filter just falls away and he can't script anything and he just he just shouts, you know, like fire in a crowded building. I just love it. So uh, a little thing for you, David. Um, Matt sent me uh, a, a song um, a couple of days ago. He's he's been working on this song for the podcast. To, it's a play on the year from Taylor's with Love. And he's worked some different lyrics into this song. And it's he's been talking about it for about the last month, going, Oh, it's nearly ready. You know, I just need to get the, the right words, I need to get its rhyme and I need to shift it into place and then I'll do the recording and then I'll do the harmonies. And I'm like, okay, you know, we'll work big to small here. But it's he finally sent the the song through at like half three in the morning my time the other day, and I woke up to it. <laughs> I played it in front of Anastasia in bed at half three. And it's it is fantastic. I mean, it's incredible. He said that I can't share it anywhere. I can't put it out anywhere. Um, but oh, no. it'll be like it'll be like one of these lost files that will kind of work its way Wait out. Yeah, is I'm he sure. singing it himself? He's singing this. He's singing it. I so I'm gonna send you a blank check <laughs> and you write whatever denomination you want and you can cash it. I need that file. <laughs> I think we can raise quite a bit for UNICEF. I mean, you would, you'll be astounded by this. It's its a real piece of work. So, Dude, if you um, ever yeah. wanted 100,000 hits on a video on your YouTube channel, <laughs> you have your answer. I know. It, and it's ingenious, the way he's worded the lyrics. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to convince him somehow that we can we can air this thing because it's locked under. It's in the James Bond archives, I think, as we speak. It's Yeah. I can uh, so, so, yeah, we'll have to definitely get um, Matt's permission, but uh, maybe we can force him with the right crowdsourcing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, crowdsourcing. Yeah. So, but you're right. When um, Matt doesn't, when he goes off piste, uh, he's, yeah, he's quite the guy. He's electric. He is. All right, Pete. Hey, thanks for spending a little time. I just wanted to get your opinion on some of these things, but appreciate you. And then we're going to get together real soon. I know it. You got it. Thanks, David. Take care. No problem. This has been David Zaritsky and Peter Brooker from Taylor's with Love. Song coming soon. You're going to hear it. Uh, and we'll see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.